ourselves abstaining from that sin, it becomes an act of worship. Abstention from prohibition is an act of worship. It pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I were to stay away from adultery, from gambling, from smoking, from drugs, from various other sins, it would automatically be an act of worship and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the further I engage in these items, the more distant I become from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah made us and Allah knows that we will be living in environments that may not be Islamic. We will be living in an environment perhaps where sin will be so easy to commit. We will be living in an environment where perhaps it will not be so simple to come to the masjid unless you have a lot of willpower and a lot of Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that to abstain from haram will be a challenge. Allah knows that we will be living across the entire globe, Muslim lands, non-Muslim lands, and so on. He knows that you and I will exist and are existing, and He knows who is to come after us. So He has set a plan, and that plan is in order to help us pull through in a way that we earn Jannah. May Allah grant us Jannah. Ameen. What is this beautiful plan? Part of it is to give us a gift known as Ramadan. Amazing. And this Ramadan is such that Wallahi, the timing of it is absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. Imagine if throughout the globe, everyone had to have Ramadan at exactly the same time in the Gregorian year, which means, say for example, now we have June and July. Throughout the life of an individual where you are living, it's always in June and July. It won't be fair because sometimes you will have a cold fast, sometimes a fast in the heat, sometimes a long one, sometimes a short one. The people in the UK are literally struggling at the moment, achieving a greater reward for their dedication for fasting 18 to 20 hours right now. But they will be smiling all the way when their fast is only about six to eight hours sometime 30 years down the line perhaps may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding look at how fair Allah is look at how balanced he is so you will taste a long fast a short fast one in summer one in winter and it keeps on moving 10 days up every single year that is the disparity between the lunar and the solar calendars may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand his justice similarly can you imagine a Ramadan that happened to have been less than 30 days, 29 days? Less. Say Ramadan was one week. Just as we are rolling in and warming up, it's over. We would not achieve the proper spirituality. Allah knows that you need one whole month out of the 12 months. You need the entire month. Imagine if Ramadan was longer than a month, perhaps we would lose focus because you know, it climaxes around the end. Amazingly, 21, 23, 25, 27, and we are climaxed right at the top. It's at the end, the masajid get even more packed. Do you agree? Subhanallah, that's the power of Allah. But if we had two months, one wonders, perhaps a month later, people would start losing focus and one wonders whether that dedication to the Quran would actually be there. Amazing, you have 30 Jews of the Quran and you have 29 to 30 days of Ramadan. Amazing how Allah has married all this, matched it in such a beautiful way for us who are his worshippers. I always tell people, if you're a believer and you have a weakness, do not justify it. Admit it, look, I'm wrong, inshallah, I work on myself and I will try to get to the best. Now, I remember every time there were people, a certain group of people, and I used to talk to them that, you know, when are you coming? When are you coming, inshallah, strengthen yourself. Come on, we need to start. Make dua for me. That was the answer. What was it? Make dua for me. My brother, when are you quitting the bottle? Make dua for me. My brother, when are you quitting this gambling? Make dua for me. When are you quitting this bad habit? Make dua for me. So much so that the statement make dua for me became cheap where it's being used as a scapegoat to say, you know what? It's okay. You worry about yourself. Let me worry about me. That statement about you worry about yourself. Let me worry about me is not from Islam. In Islam, we are taught to be concerned about ourselves primarily, but we have to reach out to those who are astray to try to guide them starting with the dua starting with the supplication and then depending on how much you're connected to them you need to give them the message